Hey, my good people, Mike Hidalgo here. Thank you for joining us on another FCP Euro DIY. Today, we're going to be working on a 2011 Porsche Carrera S. Today, we're going to be covering how to replace the front brake pads and rotors on your 911. We're going to be using the Techstar Zimmerman kit that we have listed on the site. It comes with both pairs of pads, rotors, and sensors for both the left and right side of the car, as well as all the hardware needed to replace it. Typically, these are going to last anywhere between 30 to 70,000 miles. It all depends on your driving habits and where you drive the car. If you're going to track the car, you're obviously going to burn through the brakes a little bit quicker than typical day-to-day -day driving. Uh, a couple things to look out for when doing your brakes is if you're checking out how much life is left on them, one thing you can do is quite literally measure your pads. You can see how many millimeters are left of meat on the backing plate. Uh, another thing you can do is check your rotors visually. You can run your fingernail through the front of them. If you have a lip on either the inside or the outside, then more than likely they're pretty worn. Uh, another thing you can notice is under heavy braking, if you're getting some pulsation in your steering wheel, it could also be a sign of a warped rotor. Now we've looked at the things that we're going to be installing today. Let's take a look at the tools we're going to need for this DIY. For this job, we have a couple tools we're going to need, starting with a hammer and a punch, a 3 8 ratchet, a 3 8 torque wrench, uh, a couple different flat heads and Phillips heads, as well as a T55 and a 10 millimeter hex, a 10 millimeter socket, an extension, and a 19 millimeter for our lug bolts. Uh, some nice to haves is some caliper hangers. We have a set of pliers that will help turn the uh, pin that holds the pads in place, a wire brush, and then a dual piston caliper spreader tool. In addition to that, we have to my right a uh, half inch impact to take off the wheels and a 3 8 electric ratchet just to speed up some of the uh, hardware removal and installation. And as always, some flashlights. Now we have our tools covered, let's get started with this DIY. Before we get started, I like to always go ahead and check out the fluid reservoir for our brakes. This one's a little bit past the max full line and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and remove a little bit of brake fluid with an extractor so that when I compress my caliper pistons in I'm not overflowing this too much or forcing fluid out. So instead I'll just take off a little bit and then once we're done with the job we can top off again if needed. And that should do us for now. Probably a little bit overkill but it doesn't hurt. I'm going to leave this like this. Now let's head over to the wheel and get started on this brake job. All right, my good people, we are working on the car on the lift today. This is a job you can easily do on the ground with a couple jack stands and a jack. To get started, we're going to go ahead and remove our wheel. You're going to need a 19 millimeter socket for that. Now with our wheel off, we can go ahead and get started. Before we do anything, because this is a New England car, uh, I'm going to go ahead and hit these with some penetrating fluid, the uh, rotor set screws, just so that they can loosen up a little bit before we get to anything further. Now to get started, we're going to start by undoing our brake pad wear sensor. To do that, I like to take a small flathead and just pry up the metal flap. With that up, then we can go ahead and undo the protective cap on the brake bleeder. Once we've done that, we can go ahead and disconnect our sensor from the car. Just pulls out from the pads, just like that. Next, before we forget, we want to go ahead and remove the cotter pin on the caliper. This cotter pin holds our bar in place that keeps our pads from coming out. This comes right out like that. The hardware kit comes with a new one, so don't worry about losing it. Next, before we forget, we have a 10 millimeter bolt back here that holds our brake line in place. I'm going to go ahead and give it a spritz of some penetrant before I undo it. Let that sit for a second. To get that bolt out, I'm just using a 10 millimeter socket with my 3 8 wrench. With both of those things undone, we can now focus on removing our brake pads. We have our cutter pin out already, so I'm going to go ahead and take a small punch in my hammer and just punch the pin through. Now with that undone, we can work on getting these pads out of here. One thing I like to do whenever I'm replacing the pads and the rotors is I like to take advantage of the caliper still being mounted and use the old pads and the old rotor to help push in the pistons back before I take everything apart. Usually to do that, I'll take a small screwdriver. In this case, I'm using a small flathead. And I'll just stick it into the hole where the pin goes through. 
just to give myself some space between the pad and the rotor. I'll do the same thing on the other side. I'm not worried about hurting these since they're coming out. If, obviously, if you're not replacing your rotors, I don't recommend you do this. That's what the caliper piston spreader tool is for. You might have to go back and forth as when you push in one set of pistons, the other side might come out a little bit. So just work it back and forth until you feel that you've had enough to eat for today. You're a hungry growing boy. All right, that should be enough. If we need to, we can go in with our retractor tool and get some more space out of there. These can come out. Now we can go ahead, before we remove the caliper, we can go ahead and get our set screws off our rotor so that way if it goes to fall off, the caliper will help keep it in place a little bit. Uh, one thing I wanted to point out, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, is a way to inspect your rotors is simply by looking at them. Now on camera it might be a little bit hard to tell, but these have quite the lip on them, both on the inside and on the outside of the rotor. Same thing goes for the back. The back's even more aggressive. I mean, my nail is just getting caught, and that's with the gloves on, so easy way to check. Now that our set screws have soaked for a little bit, I'm gonna go ahead and take my Phillips set screwdriver and a hammer, and what I like to do is I like to get it in place, and then give it a couple whacks to kind of shock it and hopefully break any corrosion free. And then from there, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a small screwdriver and just shove it in the veins of the rotor so that it doesn't spin on me while I try to break these free. I'm gonna leave this one loose in here so I can break this rotor free and not let it drop on my feet. No, I'm not wearing Crocs today. Now we're gonna work on removing our caliper. Now, one thing to note, the old hardware requires a T55. The new hardware that holds it on is a 10 millimeter hex. Same bolt, just a little bit updated, but just one thing I wanted to point out before you got too far into this. So again, a T55 for the old hardware. And now I'm gonna take my caliper hooks from earlier hang one on one of the coils from the strut. Swing my caliper over. And just hang it off to the side like that. One thing to note, you wanna take out these old shims. If they don't just fall out on their own. You can pry them off with a flathead. Goodbye. One thing I like to do, if I don't wanna ruin my ears, is I like to take a big flathead screwdriver and shove it in the veins of the rotor. Just give it a couple whacks. And usually that does the trick. Before we assemble anything, I'm gonna go ahead and clean up my hub here. I have a small wire brush. You can use a wire wheel on a drill, on any rotary tool. This is what we have today. Budget cuts, you can't get a real wire wheel in here. Now, before we put on a new rotor, I'm gonna go ahead and take a little bit of liquid moly ceramic paste and just dress the hub a little bit so that hopefully if this car sees any more heavy New England weather, the new rotors won't seize on. So let's just give that the JR and paint it on. I'm gonna go ahead and take my rotor and just slip it over. If possible, try to either keep your hands clean when you're handling them or change gloves, whatever you need to do. You don't wanna get this too grimy because due to the zinc coating, you don't wanna go ahead and brake clean it. You'll go ahead and ruin the coating. Obviously this part doesn't matter, but anything around that or the hub. Then from here, I personally like to put a little bit over the set screw itself, just to keep some of the moisture out for the future. Just like that. Now from here we can go ahead and prep our calipers so we can load them up with some fresh pads. One thing I want to point out is you can see for the most part, if you can see that on camera, three out of my four pistons are fully compressed. This one's going to fight me a little bit. So I'm going to try to fit my caliper piston spreader tool in here just to even that out before we go ahead and mount it back onto the car. Now we can go ahead and put our new shims into the calipers. Don't forget to take off the backing plate, otherwise you'll find these poking out of your calipers later down the road. they are two different sizes. The pistons are both two different sizes, so you can't mix them up. They only go in one way. Just set that in there like that. Take your other one. Same thing, just place it in. Again, two different diameters. Unhook my caliper. 
And for these new bolts, you're gonna need a 10 millimeter hex. Now we're gonna go ahead and torque them both down to 63 foot pounds. Now we can go ahead and slip our new pads in. They only go in one way. They're both the same, so don't worry about mixing them up when you take them out of the box. There's one. There's two. Some piece of junk. Now we're gonna take our new retaining clip, kinda get it into place, take our new pin and start feeding it through. Once you have it in, you wanna go ahead and install your new cotter pin that comes with it as well. I'm gonna take my pliers and I'm gonna rotate the pin just a little bit so that I have easier access to the hole. Damn, baby. Next on our list, before we forget about it, is that 10 millimeter bolt we took out at the beginning that holds our brake line in place. Just wanna get it started by hand. With that on, then we can go ahead and work on routing our new brake pad wear sensor. You're gonna start with the red covered end. It's gonna be your outboard sensor. Speed that in there. Hook it onto the new clip. And feed your other end on the other pad, on your inboard pad. Just like that. Feed the shielding through the caliper and make sure you get it back through the brake bleeder. And then just plug it right back in. Just like that, metal clip down, and don't forget to put your bleeder cap back on. Now with everything on, we can go ahead and get our wheel back on. Now we're gonna go ahead and take our 19 millimeter socket and lug. I'm just gonna snug these up in the star pattern. Then I'm gonna torque them down to 95 foot pounds. And just one thing to note before we wrap this up, the procedure on the driver's side of the car is gonna be identical to what we just did here on the passenger side. Both have wear sensors, both have the same hardware, so pretty straightforward. Just mirror what you did on one side on the other. Again, we're gonna to torque these down to 95 foot pounds. And there you have it, my good people, another DIY in the books. Overall, a straightforward job on the 997. Again, this is gonna be applicable to all dot one and dot two models. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments on what we did today, leave those in the comment box below. And if you like this DIY and you wanna see more like them, please consider subscribing. We make new ones all the time. As always, thank you for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.